Hi, welcome to the area of computation. In this video, let's discuss about the design of finite state machines. Recall the configuration of finite state automata. The CPU and program memory together is the finite automata, this block. And we have memory for the input and the memory for the output and both are of string types. If we give the input, okay, we do not have any temporary memory to uh, store the intermediate results, okay, and we are to produce the output string. So we we can uh, alter this design slightly for our convenience and make this finite state machine as a finite state acceptor. We have slightly modified the design. Instead of the string output, now we are going to have a boolean output, which is either accept or reject. So this is also possible because when we considered the uh, membership problem in the very beginning, the first class, okay, we can pass both the input and output and the algorithm will execute uh, the algorithm for the input and compute some result which will be compared against the output and if they are same then we will give true otherwise false. So the same type of machine we construct here. So the string output now we have modified to a boolean output. Now let's consider an example to construct the finite state machine. Let the sigma b or the input symbols be 0 and 1 that is we are going to consider binary strings. L is a set okay L is a language which we are trying to uh, design for which we are trying to design the finite state machine. So L is a set of strings from sigma star that is binary strings such that each string has even number of zeros. So the number of zeros has to be even. So L is set of all x's that belongs to sigma star such that x has even number of zeros. So take some examples. Consider this one, okay? 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. In this, how many zeros we have? We have two zeros. So 2 is an even number. So this belongs to L. And in the string, we have 2, 4, 6 zeros. And 6 is an even number. And therefore, this string belongs to L. This string has three zeros, which is an odd number. 3 is an odd number. So, this string does not belong to the language that we are considering. How about this one? 1, 1, 1, 1. Does this belong to L or not? Okay. So, how many zeros? We are bothered only about the zeros. How many zeros are there in the strings? We have zero number of zeros, right? So, whether zero is even or odd? Zero is an even number. So, this string belongs to L. Given such problem, how do we compute whether the string x belongs to the language or not? Okay, so we write a program which will take the input x and will count the number of zeros and make sure that this number is even. And if it is even, we say it belongs to the uh, set, otherwise it is not. Unlike this, the design of finite state machine has certain restriction that we need to consider while designing. Unlike the program which counts the number of zeros and temporarily we store this count in a variable and then we divide this count by 2 and check whether the remainder is 0 or not. So we need to have another temporary variable to store the remainder and then we check whether this is equal to 0 or not. Okay. So since finite state machine do not have any temporary memory, I cannot adopt this procedure. So we have certain things that we have to consider while we are designing a finite state machine. The first thing is the, the input is serial. Okay, We scan the input from left to right and one input at a time. That is the input is like a serial input. I can get only one input at a time and when we finish scanning the input we should be ready with the answer i cannot have i cannot delay it further i cannot do any other computation once i have scanned the input from left to right and the input is over we should be ready with the answer 
so what we do is that we do not even know whether we have reached the end or not if there are no further symbol in the input then that means that we have reached the end otherwise we will consider that we might terminate at every input there is possibility that the input might be terminated at every single input and we will take decision decisions now and there so that as soon as the input is over we are ready with the decisions for example if you consider this string okay let's consider this 11010 the input might terminate at this point say one after we read 110 the input might have terminated or it would have scan one more one okay so it's that i i take decision at every input symbol so that when i reach the end of the input i am ready with the decision these are the fundamental things we will keep in our mind while we are designing the finite state machine now when we apply our design principles how do we design this are we really interested in the count of number of zeros it is not right we are bothered only whether it is even or not that's all we are bothered about we are we doesn't see here there are two zeros the count is two here there are six zeros we are not worried about whether it is two or six all that we are worried is whether it is even or not the number of ones is the number of zeros is even or not so instead of counting i can say when i see this one i know that i haven't seen any zeros and here also i haven't seen any zeros and as soon as i see a zero i know that i have seen one zero that means that it is a odd number of zeros then i can keep in my mind that i have seen odd number of zeros so far in the input and then when i see the next one i am not bothered about this one because we don't have any anything to do to do with ones okay so i can simply skip this and when i see another zero i already know that i have kept in mind that i have seen odd number of zeros from odd number of zeros if i see another one i know that now i have seen even number of zeros okay so my state of my mind is having only two states either i have seen odd number of zeros or i have seen even number of zeros we will use this design principle to design the finite state machine for this language so to start with i have only two state of mind either i have even number of zeros or odd number of zeros okay so that state of mind we have represented as two states in the machine now when we are in in the state of mind that we have seen even number of zeros and we are seeing another zero in the input then i know that i have to change my state of mind to odd number of zeros so far so far we have seen odd number of zeros and when we are in in the state that is we have seen odd number of zeros so far and then we get a zero in the input then we know that from odd number of zeros if we get another zero then we have seen even number of zeros so far so we will transit to the state of mind okay so this is how we transit between these two states when we get zero in as the input symbols when we get one as the input symbol from the even number of zeros seen so far we are not bothered about the one okay still my decision doesn't change because one does not affect my decision i am bothered only about the number of zeros so when i am in the state of mind that i have seen zero number of sorry even number of zeros as so far in the input and when a one comes in the input my decision does not change so i just remain in the same state of mind and similarly when we are in the odd number of zeros seen so far in the input and we get a one in the input we don't change our decision and we remain in the same state of mind that we have seen odd number of zeros in the input so far now we have to decide from which state i have to start this machine 
whether I have to start from this even number of zeros or odd number of zeros. I know if I am in even number of zeros and a zero comes, I have to move to this state. And from this state, if I get a one, I will remain in the same state. And if I get a zero from this state, I have to go to this state. All these transitions are defined. But where do I start with? Okay, so let's consider an input. And before we start, start scanning the input, we are here. We are before the input. That means that we haven't seen any input symbol. And what input symbol we are interested in? Then a zero. So I can say before start scanning the input, I have seen zero number of zeros. And we know that zero is a even number. So we will start with the even number. That is the machine will start start with the even number and why do we call this as a machine this is not a uh, you know a physical machine like a lathe machine or a drilling machine but we do these transitions very mechanistically and that is why we call this as a machine otherwise this is a software right and so we have found that before I read any input I know that I have seen zero number of zeros and zero is a even number so from nowhere I will have an arrow which will indicate that this is the starting state of the machine now at the end of the input we have to be ready with the answer and what we are interested in we are interested in the strings that contain even number of zeros so if I land in the state at the end I have to say yes if I land in the state at the end of the input then I have to say no so to differentiate the yes state okay which is the accepting state or the final state we will represent with a double circle so at the end of the input if we are landing in the state that means that we are accepting that input which means that the string the input belongs to the language now let's see how this machine works for this input so before we start reading the input we are here this is the input pointer and we will be in the starting state which is indicated by this red mark now we scan the first input and it is 1 we are in the state and we are getting 1 as input and we transit back to the same state because we are bothered only about the zeros. The next input is also 1. So from this state I will make the transition back to the same state for the input 1. The next input is 0. We are in this state and we are getting a 0 as input. So I have to transit to this state and this is odd number of zeros we have seen so far odd number of zeros now we are in the state and we see a one so we transit back to the same state for this input one the last input is zero so from we are currently in this state and we are reading in a zero as the input so we transit to this state once the input is over we don't have any more symbols so we know that we have reached the end of the input and at the end of the input we have landed in this state that means that this is our accepting state that means that this string belongs to L. If there is one more zero here from this state we would have transited to this state and after that there will be no symbols in that case the string will not be accepted by the machine. Let's now formally define the finite state machine or deterministic finite state automata DFA. It is represented by M with 5 entities which is a tuple. Okay, so sorry for this bracket I have to have a uh, open and close bracket this bracket instead of the set bracket we will have this, this bracket. It's a 5 tuple. So Q is a finite set of states here we have two states q0 and q1 
and what is this q not q not is equal to this even number of zeros we don't write like a sentence in this one this is for our understanding this even number of zeros i have represented as q not and odd number of zeros we i have represented with q1 so this q not and q1 are the members of finite set q is a set which is finite so finite that is why it is called finite state machine we the set of states in the machine is finite here there are two states in the machine the next entity is the uh, sigma the finite set of input symbols so the input can be only from the symbols defined in this sigma in our case it is binary symbol so it is 0 and 1 and these input symbols we represent in the transition okay these these arrows are the transitions and uh, upon what input we make the transition we represent in the uh, edges so this is actually the input symbols next is the transition function delta as i have already told all these arrows which goes from one state to the other or to the same state it is called the transition and we represent it like this okay delta of q not i start from q not upon the input 1 where do i go i go back to q not okay so that is this arrow i start from q not this this place and then what is the input 1 q not 1 where do i go i go back to q not okay so this is this one and similarly this here if you see we start with from q not upon the input 0 i go to q1 so similarly we can write all the transition so in general transition function is a function which is a mapping from the domain q cross sigma which is the cartesian product between the state the set of states and the set of symbols it is mapped to the range the states the range is the states the next component is the starting state q not is the starting state and for any machine we will have only one starting state so it is a single element and the last one is the finite set of accepting states or final states in our case it is only one state which is q not uh, otherwise you can have more than one accepting state as well so your finite state machine or the deterministic finite state automata is defined with this five components which is the q the finite set of states sigma the finite set of symbols sigma the finite set of symbols and delta the finite set of transitions q not the starting state and f finite set of accepting states let's consider another example which is a language l whose members are the set of x's that belongs to sigma star and sigma is binary 0 and 1 such that x has even number of zeros and even number of ones so instead of simply tracking zeros we now track one as well so how our state of mind will be either i can have zero sorry even number of zeros and even number of ones or even number of zeros and odd number of ones or odd number of zeros and even number of ones or odd number of zeros and odd number of ones okay so these are the four combinations for this even number of zeros and odd num i mean even and odd of zeros and ones so even number of zeros and even number of ones let's uh, denote by q not and even number of zeros and odd number of ones we denote it as q1 and similarly q2 represents odd number of zeros and even number of ones similarly q3 represents odd number of zeros and odd number of ones from q not which is even number of zeros and even number of ones if i get a zero that means that from even zeros we are making odd zeros now by accepting this zero 
but even number of ones remain the same so we go to odd number of zeros and even ones which is q2 so we go here from q2 if you get another zero here it is odd number of zeros so when you get from odd number of zeros one more zero you you will make this even number of zeros and even number of ones remain the same so from here you will go to even number of zeros and even number of ones when you get zero as input so you'll go back to q0 similarly from q0 if you accept a one you will have even number of zeros but now the number of ones have become odd so you will go to q1 which is even number of zeros and odd number of ones and from q1 if you accept a one you will go back to q0 because this odd number of from odd number of ones if you accept another one you will go back to even number of ones and even number of zeros so you will come back here similarly from q1 if you get a one what is q1 q1 is even number of zeros and odd number of ones and if you get a zero here now this even zero will change to odd zero so you'll have odd zero and odd one which is q2 sorry you will have odd zero and odd one which is q3 and you will go to q3 so from q3 if you get another zero you will change this odd zero to even 0 and odd 1 which is q1 and similarly from q2 if you get a 1 you will go to q3 because q2 is odd 0 and even 1 from even 1 if you get a get another 1 as input you will go to odd 1s ok odd 0s odd even 1s to odd 0s odd 1s so you will go to q3 and from q3 if you accept one one more 1 we will go back to q2 these transitions are fair now where do i what do we start with before we accept any input we have seen zero number of ones and zero number of zeros and both are zero and we know that e zero is even so we start from even zeros and even one and thereby we give this q naught the starting state so we have a arrow from nowhere and what is our accepting state x should have even number of zeros and even number of ones and what is that state it is q naught again okay so we will represent q naught as the uh, final state or the accepting state by the double circle now these are the five components of the machine we have q the set of finite set of states we have four states q0 q1 q2 and q3 and we have the sigma the set of symbols which is 0 and 1 delta the transition functions transition functions we can represent using the table so from q0 if i get 0 as input we go to q2 from q0 if i get 0 as input we go to q2 and from q0 if i get 1 as input we go to q1 from q0 if we get 1 as input we go to q1 okay so we can represent the transitions which are these arcs using this table and the starting state is q0 and the set of final state is q0 thereby we have finish designing the finite state machine or deterministic finite state automata for this language and why do we call this design as deterministic finite state automata is that if you consider the transition if you start from any state for any particular input we land exactly in one state and we do not have any confusion okay it is very deterministic and very definite okay that that is why we call this as deterministic finite state machine deterministic because of this transition function nature and finite state because we have a finite set of states in the design of the machine let's consider one more example where this language cons consists of only one string which is a b b a where the input symbols are 
A or B. And we wanted to design the finite state machine or deterministic finite state automata for this language L. Since any finite state automata will start from a state, we will have Q0 as our starting state. And from Q0, if we have A, then we, we can be sure that we have seen this A. So from Q0, if I accept A, we go to another state because we have to ensure that we have seen this A. So we go to another state Q1 on this input A. And from Q1, if I see a B, then we can be sure that we have seen this two symbols A, B consecutively. So from Q1, if we see a B, then we can go to Q2, a new state, because from Q0, I have seen the first A and consecutively from Q1, I have seen the B. From Q0, I have seen A and I have come to Q1, which will ensure that I have seen this A. And from Q1, I transit to Q2 because we wanted to ensure that we have seen these two symbols continuously. So from Q2, again if I see a B, then we have to go to a new state, Q3, to ensure that we have seen A, B, B. And from Q3, if I see a A, then we can go to Q4 and we have seen the string A, B, B, A. So Q4 is our final state. So we can mark this as with a double circle. Now from Q0, instead of A, if I see a B, okay, there is no string in this L which will start with B. So we have to have another state. From Q0, if I see a B, we will go to the new state. So let that state be Q5. And from Q1, if I see another A, then we will go to the same state Q5 because from Q0 we have come to Q1 by accepting a A and we get another A. That means that our input symbol is A followed by another A, okay, which is not a valid string in this language. Okay, So we go to this Q5 and we similarly deal the other states as well. So from Q2, instead of B, if I get a A, we'll go to Q5. From Q3, instead of A, if I get a B, we'll go to Q5. And from Q4, if I get either A or B, okay, so I must A here, it has to be either A or B, I have to go to this uh, Q5. And from Q5, if I get a A or B, then I have to remain in the same state. So once we reach Q5, any input will take us to the same state because any string starting with B or if it is like AA or any string AA followed by any strings of AB or ABA and any string following with AB, all these are strings that are not accepted by this language. So we will have the transitions back to Q5 as soon as we reach Q5. Thus we have designed the uh, machine for this language. A, B, B, A. Now let us define a terminology. We know what is delta which is the transition function which is a mapping from Q cross sigma to Q and sigma is the input symbols. right? Now we wanted to extend this uh, sigma or the transition function to strings from a single symbol to we want to extend to string and this is a recursive definition or inductive definition and the basis is like this delta cap the extended transition function for string if we start from some state q and accept a null string we land in the same same state we are in state q and we are accepting the null string. That is we are not accepting any symbol. In that case we will remain in the same state. Now the induction part of the definition is. Let us consider a string 
W which we can split and write it as XA. X is the prefix of A and A is the suffix of X. And X is a string, substring of W and A is a single symbol. And we can define the delta cap of Q, W, the string as delta cap of Q, XA which is the W. And now we can split this as delta of delta cap of q comma x comma a that is from q after scanning x we will land in a state and from that state if we apply the delta upon the input symbol a we will go to a state and that will be the state which we will get after scanning the entire input w and now if you see this delta cap, delta cap is a function defined from Q some state and the string. Instead of the symbol, we now have the string. Okay, So, it is Q cross sigma star. That is the Carti Cartesian product of the state and the string and it is mapped back to the state. Now let's consider an example. We have seen this machine A B B A. And now we wanted to find out what is the transition when we start from Q0 and accept the string A B. So this A B is our W now, which we can split as A followed by B. Now this X, the string X is actually A, and the symbol A is represented by B. So, I can write it as delta of delta cap of Q0, a followed by the delta of B. And this one we can again write it as delta of delta cap of Q0, the empty string for this input symbol A. Now, from the basis we know that delta cap of Q0, epsilon is going to be Q0. So, this will reduce to Q0 and we know what is delta of Q0, a. From Q0, if you have the input symbol a, we go to Q1. So, this will reduce to Q and delta cap of Q1, b will be Q2 because from Q1, if you have the input b, we go to Q2. So, this is the delta cap function which is the extension of delta two strings. Now let's define the language of the finite state machine, deterministic finite state machine. Let the deterministic finite state automata be represented by the machine M which has this five tuples and the language of the machine M is defined as L of M which is equal to the set of all strings W such that when we start from Q0 and scan the input string, finally we will end in, in a state which is a member of the set of final states. That is the language of the machine L of M. And this L of M is unique to this M. Every language has a unique, uh, every machine has a unique machine or every machine defines a unique language. And we have to be aware of this one because sometimes we might get misled. Consider this language L1 which we have seen already which is set of all strings that belongs to the binary uh, language such that X has even number of zeros and even number of ones. And this language is suppose if we have a machine M to accept this language and we have designed this machine already and this L of M is actually L1. Now consider another language L2 with two elements 0 0 and 1 1 0 0 and this is also a language because L2 is also a subset of sigma star. Now the question is is L2 accepted by M? Okay, In, in TOC this question means is the language of M is L2? 
that is the meaning of this question is yes, l2 accepted by m okay although the individual members okay 0 0 has even number of zeros and even number of ones so it is accepted by m and this string is also accepted by m but is this l2 the language of m the answer is no because the language lm is much bigger than this l2 okay and l2 is a subset of l of m so l2 the members of l2 are accepted by m but l2 all together is not the language of m so yes l2 accepted by m the answer is no so we have to be careful with this one l2 is a subset of l of m in the next video lecture we will discuss about non-deterministic finite state machines and thank you for watching this video.